we moved from four bedroom duplex to squeeze everything. You had everything. We had yeah, everything. we had everything. And then we moved into one room with our children. So we all stay on the bed, our kids stay on the bed and then we had the we, we had the formula of sleeping. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've been meaning to ask. I'm so excited today to have a lovely couple all the way from Nigeria to Kenya, to Nairobi. And these guys are not just any ordinary people. You will come to know that these people have been led to being here today. And not just that, they're extremely gifted, known everywhere in the world, have performed, let me tell you, this man is called the Guitar Man of Africa. And when you get to hear some of the stuff that he does, you will agree with me that Africa is truly blessed. I have Femi and Ini Leye. Woo! <laughs> I mean, I Thank mean, you, you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you, you nailed it. Welcome, welcome, welcome on the show, Thank guys. You. And you. Asante Sana. I, I, you know, I cannot wait to hear your story. I've had a little bit about it, but I want to hear. Uh, why are you in Nairobi today? <laughs> so why? Ini, tell us. How do you follow this guy? Was it his idea or was it your idea? Whose idea was it? It was God. It wasn't because it was based on the two of us. It wasn't like it wasn't on our radar at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, it, it all started in March, March uh, 2022, last uh -huh. year, basically. Uh -huh. um, I remember that. Uh, how do I start? Okay, the fellowship. Fellowship, yes. yeah. So I went for uh, a fellowship. And the interesting thing is that um, I was so tired, but then my friend was organizing this worship service called the Sacrifice of Worship. Okay. And I just had this burning feeling like I just had to be there. Wow. Like I had to be there. It was really early in the morning, super early. We have two kids, so you know, getting up in the early to go out somewhere is, yeah. a, is a hassle. But I begged him, I was like, I just, I have to go. I have to be there. Um, which I'm learning that when God wants to send you somewhere, he would actually literally light the fire under your bum wow. to make you go. <laughs> it's like a setup. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I get there and um, doing the sermon, uh, the worship is, is, is lit, for lack of a better word. <laughs> wow. And I'm sweating, I'm burning, I'm burning up. I remove, my, I take off my wig, take off my hat, take off my sweater. I'm thinking, am I going to become naked in this worship service? I'm burning up. And literally, I hear God say, I have set you on fire. Um, I'm leading you. And then he says, um, go home, sell it, sell everything. And you know, you look around and you're wondering, am I really, is this my... <laughs> go home, sell everything. everything. And you know, I, I think to myself, it's not, maybe I'm just hearing things, but yeah. mm -hmm. till the end of the worship service, till the end, that's all I keep hearing repeatedly. Go home, sell it, sell everything. I'm, I'm willing and then, our dear friend and pastor, Pastor Isi, is preaching, and all she's preaching about is Abraham sacrificing Isaac. I love Pastor Isi, by the way. Oh, <laughs> she's goodness. so dear to her heart. Yeah. And she's preaching, and she's just like looking in my direction. I'm sure she can't even see me, but I'm just thinking, why is she facing me? Like, and she just, she, she's, she's just shouting, and she's talking about Abraham sacrificing Isaac, and everything is just aligning with what I'm oh, hearing. Oh, my goodness. And you know, God is saying, go home, sell, it, sell, it, sell everything. And I'm just wailing, I'm crying. By the end of the service, my eyes, my whole face is red. So I'm going home, I tell him, I said, you know, God has given us a word. And just pray <laughs> that God will prepare your heart before I come home. Yes. Because I don't know how I'm going to. So I get home, I sit him down, I tell him, he's so concerned. And I say it, and he's just, you know, he's just like, okay, so when do we start? I'm like, no, that's not what you're supposed to say. Wow. You're supposed to say, you're supposed to, say to me, okay, babe, let me, let me pray about it, let me fast. And then I'll come back to you, oh God. And he's like, no, I, I know how God has led us so far. I know what God has done. And the thing is that God had already been preparing you with yeah. giving, yeah. giving out things that matter to him. I remember in it's 2020, yeah. God asked him to give out his most expensive guitar in, in a dream. And I remember he woke up, he was so sad and said, you know, God said I should give out this guitar. I was quiet because I didn't know how to. You know, there are ways as a wife, you know how to tell your husband, give him a word that, you know, God is good. God is amazing. But in this case, I didn't know what to say. So I said, you know wow. what? I sent him to somebody else. I said, call, call your friend, call Maf. You know, anyway, and he did that. It was, it was such a, it was, so I think God had already prepared his heart. 
and Ini, are you saying you came home yeah on that one conversation he said when do we prepare he said yeah when we start yes that's what he said did you think he was nuts yes i did i did, <laughs> I did because i've i've been crying yeah. all day yeah. and, and i was like, I was like this this man <laughs> but then you know so i you know that whole night as i'm saying i'm even sweating on my feet because every time i think about that moment i'm just like that was such a determining factor for the rest of the journey because in that moment if whatever femi had said and whatever I had done as well would have determined where, you know, what our life would have been Femi, like. Femi, I want to hear I want to hear from you. <laughs> your wife comes home. Yeah. First, she had begged to go to this meeting. So yeah. you're, you're, probably, <laughs> you're probably wondering, did this she already wife. have this thing before she left, right? So what happened? She comes home. I thought of it this way. So I, I was in the house with, with the kids, you know, we're just playing. And then she called me and she was like, there's something I have to tell you. Ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your mind for what's about to happen. <laughs> I'm like, what's this for my man? This I have, whatever, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I remember, I think we, we took a prophetic class. Was it before then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was but, before then, the year before. Yeah, the year before. The both so, of, the, yeah, both of us, we did a prophetic class, class uh, posting, uh, the posting the presence, the presence uh, in conjunction with Bethel in America. So our, our, our mentor, Pastor UD, was going to handle this. So, you know, our hearts had just been in a particular spot. So when she said, I'm like, okay, come on. So she sat me down in the sitting room and was like, God said we should sell everything. The moment she said that, what went through my mind is, if you give up everything, that means more is coming. So let it go. So I didn't have to think about it. I'm like, when do we start? That was exactly what I said. When do we start? And it's safe to say, when we got married, we were living in a two-bedroom apartment. We had our mattress on the floor. Yeah. In the two-bedroom, there was a lot of echo because we didn't have anything. Yeah, so you can understand. <laughs> yeah, you could hear each other. So yeah. we started clearly. <laughs> you can imagine we started building, and then you know, but before a month before we had our first baby, uh, we moved to a four-bedroom duplex in the very, very choice part of Lagos, and then we started building stuff. So at this point, we had everything that could make you comfortable. We were quite comfortable. We were okay. We had the mail. We had everything. The children were okay. Their school. Everything was fine. I had a state-of-the-art studio in the house, so I worked from home, you know, and then God says. Now is the time for to, to sell gift. everything. And, I'm like, yeah. and so the word was sell everything, take the money and give it away. No, no, no. At first, we didn't sell, know. Sell everything is enough, right? <laughs> you know, at first, we didn't know what to do with the money. I was, I was logically thinking that, you know, when we sell everything, mm. maybe, because we we're already thinking of moving, moving yeah. maybe the money was supposed to be for um, our next rent. For our next rent. Yeah. You and, know, then we'll start and then we'll start buying new things. Yeah. And so um, we were, and then I, I told her, I was like, maybe this, and he was like, yeah, it's possible, but let's just keep praying. And, you know, God came to us again and said, oh, I will tell you what you do, the, do with the money. The money isn't for you. When you sell each item, I would highlight a person to you and that's the person you give the money to. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is in a span of how long? From the it's time a span of a week. Yeah, it's a span of a week. Yes. Did yes. God speak to Femi or did he speak to you? <laughs> God spoke to me. And then, we start, and, then, we started, and then we started praying and then the word became very clear yes, also to me. To Femi, yes. So I had a lot of peace about it. So but the, what, what I couldn't reconcile, I was okay with selling the stuff. But giving out that money. I know. That, <laughs> oh my God. And you know, <laughs> if we had that. money, this is the thing. <laughs> if we had our money, on the side and we're giving out this money it's different it's a, but we had nothing <laughs> we had nothing and we're giving out millions oh yeah oh and prior to this prior to this god had shut down our businesses yeah right? yes he so asked, me to, working, he asked me to shut working. down he asked me to just shut down the first thing god okay no 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 it wasn't prior it was actually after, after it was after. actually after so we're still thinking okay we still have our businesses money is coming in but after a while god told us to pack that up as well you know, so we had we were literally eating from God's hand. It was it was literally like uh, um, this journey is not by anything you can do. That's yeah. one constant thing God yeah. kept saying. This is God actually started saying that to us from the pandemic, over and over again. He kept telling us that your lives are are your your lives are a showcase of it's not by what you can do. It's not by anything you do with your hands. Oh, I will feed and you. And also the word of the glass house. Our life is like. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. We need to <laughs> Tell us about we need to, that one. We need to go back. I want to hear that one. <laughs> so at the beginning of 2020, mm -hmm. I started having dreams. I started having dreams of this white house, 
and you know I would see in parts I would see today I see the master bedrooms more I see the living room I see the kitchen I see and it would have it was white and then you know had glasses glass windows glass railings you know flowers and all of that and different interpretations would come for it and then there was a time I saw the full thing and then after a while it's, it's one thing for you to have a dream this is between you and God you share it with your spouse you talk about it but then different people come up to you and say oh um, I have a word for you God says he's going to give you a white house you wow. know and different people keep coming in fact towards the end of 2020 I was so sure I told Femi, I said, Femi by the end of this year we're moving to our white house <laughs> I said, no, I'm so sure. Because people cannot come and be telling me what I've dreamt of, what only me and God have talked about. Wow. And people come and talk to you. I say, oh, I see you guys in this white house. You know, I see you guys, and then there's glass. You know, I see you guys in this room, and then flower. I'm like, Wait, wow, I, I, wow, I, I, wow. I didn't think God thought Nairobi was a white house. Oh, oh you know. <laughs> was, that, was that the white house? <laughs> no. We, even though there's a connection. Yeah, absolutely a, no idea. No idea. Even though there's a connection, we'll tell you about that. So when, we, when God says, oh, sell everything, and, you know, and... and we're thinking, oh, it's time to move into the White House. It's time now. Yeah. Oh, then, because that's a natural thing to do. Yes. And then you see, we now decided, we now started looking for White House. I can't so believe that saw, this thing is making me laugh now saw, because I really cried then. <laughs> we saw a particular house. It felt, it felt like it had everything that the description. Yeah. yeah. Now this house was about half a billion naira, so it was in very expensive house. But we went in with confidence. We went, we went to with our anointing oil. By that time, we didn't even have a car, but we went with confidence, like, you know, we knew exactly, you know, God I said, we took anointing oil, we asked them, can we anoint the house? We anointed the house. Yeah, we Jesus. prayed. We even shared our story our with them. We you know, prayed for like, them, prophesied over like, them. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys, oh. you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we were <laughs> you anointed just, someone else's house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, we even went for another service, another crusade. I went for another crusade. And there, the lady was preaching. And she was like, you know, there are some things that you have to burst forth with your word of prophecy. You know, and it's time, Epatha. This is in Mark, where, where Jesus looked up to the Epatha, heavens. Yeah. And yeah, I, so I said, I called Femi. I stepped out of the crusade. I said, Femi, we need to declare that this house, this white house, she was anointed. The, it needs I, to I, open I, I, up I, I, for you us. You said I was in the house. And we were praying. On <laughs> and we were praying. praying. You know, but then, this, I remember that we were praying. And... June came, May came, June came, April, you and know, all the months, selling. and then we started selling, and then June we had to move out of our house, and so we moved out of our house, no and white house, no, no money, nothing, no thing. and no then money, no, we I had no idea where we were going to go, we, we didn't know where we were going, yes, we people we food to. and all of that. Okay, so at, what started happening is things started disappearing from the house, so yeah, first people was the studio, buying. and then it was a sitting room, then where it got really real was when the fridge had to go. Yeah. And then she was like, ah, oh, the food was spoiled. And she placed all the food on the counter in the kitchen. And then by the next day, all the food spoiled. So she had to call. Well, almost, almost, almost all. Yeah, almost all, yeah. We yeah, could yeah. save some. So um, our neighbor, and then she had to call her and like, can we put some of our food? Of which God had told us to call our neighbor. And we were, we were dilly dallying because we were thinking, we were feeling embarrassed. Like, how do you call someone and say, How do you even explain? Yeah, explain that you want to put your food in the story? Do you understand? <laughs> so, we kept, so our maid would take the food. To she the was so gracious. And then she was so gracious. She gave, she gave us like a little part of our fridge. And then things started disappearing from the house. And then at the point, we realized that, oh, we had to stay in the house. So, we left. But before we left, we didn't know where we were going to go to. So, one of our friends that anytime they were in Lagos, where we were, would stay in our house. Because we, we asked for a bedroom, so they stay upstairs, husband and wife. They were pregnant and they now moved to Lagos and got a duplex also. And we went also to on the house. same also the same kind of journey. The same kind of journey. They had a, they have a house in, in mm, Port Harcourt. They were yeah. building it and God told them to leave it and come back to Lagos. They came to Lagos literally with just two suitcases with nothing else. And so it was the same kind of journey. It was the same kind of, and, you know, <laughs> God just did it for them and they, they had so we were at the wedding of a friend and they were like, We know you guys will not say anything, but we are offering for you to come to our house and stay. Because your rent has expired, we need to move. So we looked at each other and like, wow, this is pride, yeah. And one of the things also God did during this journey is anything, anything that has to do with pride died. Yeah. In 2022, it died because okay. we just went, we went through it. So we moved from four bedroom duplex to squeeze. With everything. You had everything. We had yeah, everything. we had everything. And then we moved into one room with our children. So we all stay on the bed, our kids stay on the bed and then we had the we, we had the formula of sleeping. <laughs> In everywhere that we had the shifts. So yeah. we, we, stayed with, we stayed with them for like a couple of days, then we moved in with my brother in law. And we, they yeah, because and um, our brother in law was like, why would you stay with a friend? So yeah. we stayed with him for two months. And then I came to Nairobi in August. I had a, I had a media run, so I came to it. And then 
I had to put them in Airbnb back in Lagos. So they stayed there for two weeks. So I came back, we stayed there, and then we had some of our friends. So it was when I was in Nairobi that she was having a conversation with a friend. At this point, I, I didn't feel like praying to God or anything. Um, I told him that I, you know, I, I acknowledged him. I told, I said, look, you know, God, I've experienced too much of you to know that I, I, I can't go anywhere else. It's me and you on the Where can you? I, Where can you hide it's too late for me to go to a herbalist wow. or say I, I don't believe in God. It's too late. But I will not deny the fact that we are hurting. We, we, we have no idea what's going on. And you know, God exposed my heart for us to have that conversation. So what had been happening was we had been looking for houses. I mean, in, in the time where we were perching, living with friends, living with family, we were looking for houses because everybody's looking at you like, okay, what's what the plan? Are you what are you guys doing? Step? But did you have an income at that time? No, we no, didn't. Nothing. We didn't. That's another thing. There was so, nothing. Everything God shut down. shut down everything. And so everyone is looking at us like, okay, Where what are you guys doing? What's the plan? Everyone is asking, what's the plan? And there are only so many ways you can say, we're, we're waiting, waiting for God. God. <laughs> <laughs> we say it once, say it twice. <laughs> When you come and is this still the same answer? Is God late? Is he not speaking? <laughs> it's still the same answer. We're waiting for God, you know. And I'm and I remember that we found one house, and it was perfect. It was a, another four bedroom duplex, um, close to where the kids' school, because the kids' school had moved as well, and um, close to where the kids' school had moved to. Um, the house had everything, furniture. And so we're thinking, is this how God works? I remember taking videos like, my God is so amazing. I remember hour. calling my mom. My mom was like, God will do what he said he will do. God is the God of the 11th hour. We were so happy. <laughs> and then they called the owner and the owner said, no. He said, no. Like he even gave some conditions that were so silly. Outrageous, and we, you, yeah. you just know that it couldn't happen. We had two days to move out of our sisters, my sister's place. And, mm -hmm. We were just thinking, so that's when we went to the Airbnb. And at that point, I was so crushed because multiple times I said, oh, yeah, it's looking like this is going to happen. You know, and then, me and family get so excited and then nothing happens. And then everyone is still looking at you. So <laughs> I remember that I didn't want to pray about it. I didn't want to talk about it. But God came to me. Family was just looking at me. I was so worried because I, I felt like I, I, I was feeling like I've dragged my husband. I've dragged my children. I've dragged my family. You're I'm feeling so, responsible. Yes, I was feeling. I was feeling so, you know, so heavy. And God came to me one evening. I remember we were packing to leave the next day, and I went downstairs to get some bags. And He says, "Talk to me. Tell me what's on your mind." I said, wow. "I said I'm angry. I'm angry." And and wow. and He said, "Are you?" He said, "Are you more angry than you are embarrassed?" Oh, and, and stop that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I was like, it was then, that was when I broke down. I just had to enter the bathroom and I was crying. I said, yes, I'm embarrassed. I feel ashamed. I feel, I feel, I feel so ashamed. I feel like oh we've not, we've, I feel like we've been living off people. People yeah. are looking at us like these people are just, they just want to be living off us. They, they're not responsible. They're not taking care of them. They have two kids, dragging two kids. Oh, and by this time we're pregnant, by the way, with our third kid. <laughs> Congratulations. Because, oh, thank you. Thank you, you, you so much. You look like a new mom. I'm not saying that. I mean, you walked in and I said, who did he come with? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank you so much. And so I remember that it was all of this. And I remember telling God that when you came to me, because God asked for this child. And I was like, when oh, you yeah, came to last, us yeah. and you told us that you needed us to be pregnant this year, I remember it was a back and forth. And I remember telling God that I, I can't, I, I don't want to do this. I'm not ready. And I, I don't, I really don't want to do it. And I remember God coming to me again and saying, okay, at the time when I was telling God that I didn't want to, he showed us a vision mm -hmm. of our three kids already grown up. So he yeah. said, this, so you are, you are struggling with the conception stage. I've, I've moved on. Your kids are grown up. Wow. And three of them were on stage. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I like, was like in the church or something. Yeah. yeah. And I remember just, you know, after I had moved past that and I, I was like, okay, it means I have to go and take out my IUD and all of that. So I delayed. And God came back and said, You haven't taken out your ID. Why haven't you done what I asked you to do? And the thing is that I was always waiting for God to come with strict instructions and say, Why haven't you done what? No, you come very gently. Very, very <laughs> like a friend, you know, so you haven't done it. Why haven't you? I, you know, and I, I, I remember saying to God, honestly, I, I don't believe that you're going to do what you said you would do. Wow. You said you would take care of us. The first it's two kids, look like it yeah, the first two kids came and we're still struggling. I don't want to struggle like that with the third kid. And God says, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And so when all of this was happening, I reminded him. I said, you said you would take care of us. Here I am pregnant. Here Femi is struggling. We have two kids, no house. People are looking at us and God said, you know, 
It's because you really think that these children are your own. Wow. And it's be also because you really think that this journey is about you, but it's not about you. When you see beyond that, then you understand. And it's also because you're trusting and looking for help in men. And I remember going to Femi with this word, and Femi was just quiet. <laughs> I was just like, this man, this man will be thinking this woman is just, you know. We're called and, to walk by faith. I'm telling person. you, and Femi had a dream, and he woke up and he told me, he said, oh, God has called us the wild ones. And I was just like, man, I don't want to The wild. wild ones. I mean, this thing is getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> like you're, even, you're even being branded by God. Yes. The wild ones. I remember yeah. one night when we had to move, and you know, we were so upset. I remember two of us crying. One night, we were crying and when we couldn't find a place to move to, I knew we had to leave. The next day. The ne in two days. Okay, this was before, yeah, but we had to, I remember that night we were in the living room in the dark yeah, yeah. and we were just crying. And I remember just thinking, I had cried for three days straight at the time, thinking, why do we have to leave here? And we already got to so we're in my sister's house. We, we didn't want for anything, you know, except for the fact that we just had to, you know, be cautious and all of that. My brother-in-law was taking care of us. My brother-in-law is the most fantastic person. He was taking care of us. He was so concerned about Femi, like man to man, taking Femi out, sitting down with him, having talks. You know, my sister was taking care of me as my sister, taking care of me, taking care of my kids. And then we had to leave. And God came to me in the night. I woke up to change my son's diaper. And God, this is one of the first times that God actually spoke to me sternly. He says, how dare you get comfortable? Ooh, hey. I, you know, I was looking around like you, and the voice was so loud. He's like, how dare you? He said, look around you, four of you in this room on this bed. Is this the plan? Was this the vision I showed you? How dare you get what, comfortable what, what here? You some semblance of comfort. Yeah, we were, we were, we were getting comfortable, you yeah. know. We didn't have to cook. We didn't have to cook. We didn't have to, you know. Close by, there was a car at this. You know, I can use my sister in law's car. It was central, it was central in, town. in town. You can buy yeah. it. Overseas. Everything is just. It won't have hurt awesome. to just stay there till whenever we figure it out. You know, and God's like, no, this is not it. <laughs> this is not the promise line. This nah. is no. This is nah. this is not it. You have to keep moving. And he said he echoed to me what Femi had heard in his dreams that you are my wild ones. You move with the wind. And so yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so two two days after we moved to uh, an Airbnb. Funny enough, opposite where we were staying. So still in the same area. So we moved and I, I, think, I, I think a couple of days after I traveled, came to Nairobi. And the way that happened? Yeah, I hadn't traveled since 2019 because that was when we had our son. So I was like, okay, you know And then what? COVID? Yeah, COVID, then, so I couldn't go anywhere. So um, I came, you know, uh, I was signed to a guitar company and we wanted to do like press in Nairobi. And so we came to Nairobi. I was doing that press and I was doing press for myself and all that. And I was just telling him, he, my wife that oh yeah i'm meeting people i met polika because we've been friends online for a while but then we got into the studio we made like two records together i was doing interviews here and there okay, was, like, the oh, it was it was amazing because <laughs> i haven't been I, the feeling of being a superstar i haven't felt that in years you know so to come to a new country and realize that people actually were listening to my music or things that have been a part of was amazing so i was on cloud nine just started forgetting like what my life was back at home <laughs> and then reality came in and i was like being very very excited telling her what was going on and then she was she was on the phone with me and said, i have to tell you something <laughs> again god, god says we should move to kenya <laughs> <laughs> wait where were you at that time here yeah. Yes, I was here. Mm -hmm. I was She's calling you. Yeah, she was in Nigeria. I was here. I was I was about to play somewhere and I was just like chilling and then I was calling her being excited and like God said we should move to Kenya. Like, what's this problem? What's this problem? Wait, Femi, I have to I have to cut it short and ask you this. Many men don't listen to their wives. Oh yeah, they are not wise men. <laughs> Let alone to be told to sell everything, yeah. give money away. And move to another country. Mm. What would cause you to listen to her? Hmm. First of all, as a man, I think you should marry where you are going to, not where you are. Hey. You're preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so when we met, I was squatting. So all this luxury that we are talking about just happened. I was squatting. I had no money. In fact, at a point, she had to start sending me money because I won't tell her that. I haven't eaten for like two days. So when we eventually told her, like, what's wrong with you? Man? I'm not eating. What do you mean you're not eating? And she was working on radio at the time. She was an OAP, you know, so she had, you know, she had money and she would send me money. And so that was how, you know, that was what morphed into our relationship. 
So when we started dating, I didn't have a house. I didn't have a house of my own. I didn't have a car. I had nothing. I had no money. But I was also I had responsibilities. I had younger ones that I was taking care of and all that. So eventually, at the point, you know, God did it. Something miraculous happened. I think it was 2016, and I got some money, I was able to buy a car, you know, I was able to get an apartment, which is all, and then things started moving from there. Then I, I traveled to Senegal, worked with some door, and then, like, my career is, like, looking really, really bright, like, you know. But she saw me from absolutely nothing. So I knew that this woman was here, and I'm here. So which means my future is really, really bright, because one of the things that she did for me was to help me with my self-esteem. Because mm. of where I'm, I'm coming from, you don't, you, are, you don't think of being successful. There are people that I grew up with that are still where I grew up till now. Some of them are living in their father's house with children. So coming out of that and meeting her, like coming from like different worlds, you know, she's this very, very confident woman, you know, one of the top OAPs in Lagos at the time and doing her thing, whatever she wants to do, she does it. So I'm like, if I can learn this woman, I will never be poor in my life, never. So. Is it would be crazy and unwise of me not to listen to her. Wow. You know, because God has given her wisdom beyond her years. So I have I have the final say, believe me, whenever she says what she wants to say, she knows if it's not something that aligns with what we are supposed to do. It's a no and it's one time and it doesn't happen. Yeah. But then when I see the wisdom in what she's saying, oh my God. Pa pa pa. That's what I'm saying, back home. <laughs> Sharply, swiftly, we do it. And we and I've seen I've seen God move, you know, through the words that come out of our mouth. Because she she constantly speaks life. The guitar that is here, I was in I was in New York. I was shortly between New Jersey and New York. I was doing some shows in America, and I had this opportunity to be signed to this guitar company, and I had just I think four hundred dollars. We just had a baby a month before. I'm like, okay, if I take this four hundred dollars back to Nigeria, at least diapers and some clothes the baby will be able to have. And I called my wife, like, I have this opportunity, you know, I have, but I need $700 to be able to be signed to this company and blah, blah. And she's like, do not make a mistake of buying any clothes for us. Do not make a mistake of bringing that money back home. Get that money and get that guitar. And I'm like, we don't have, at that point, we had nothing, you know. And I, you know, I got signed to the company and I got the guitar. And I still have the guitar till this day. And I'm like, who would think about that? And also, I remember our third year anniversary, we, we eventually went somewhere because we never went on our own anymore. It's been a very wild journey. And we, I had some money, but I needed to buy studio equipment. And she's like, buy your studio equipment because you make money off of that for us. And she was right. Because immediately I bought the equipment, I started making albums from my home studio. People were coming to the house and offering me money. And then from the comfort of my house, I'll make albums for people. And then I'll have money in my pocket. And I'll be. And at, at that point, I remember, was it 2019, babe? Everything I, I make as a man, Every single combo, every single naira that I make, I transfer it directly to my wife's account. So if I, if I need to buy credit, I ask her to send me credit. For me, you're not an unusual man. No. You're unusual. What are you talking? Are you serious? Yeah, that's that's. I, I, I just I just send it to her. Investment. We want to buy a land. Give you money to her. When we are ready to do the investment, we we'll put it there. But money in my account. So if anybody's asking me for money, I'm like, go and talk to my wife. <laughs> she will know how much to give you, but don't come and talk to me because I don't have any money. But I'll go out, I'll make millions and come back home and deposit in her account. Do you trust in the God in her? Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at me now. I'm very fine. <laughs> it's because of her. Of course I do. Really, really well. Because I've seen how God has used her. Not just for me personally, but for other people. I've seen how God has used her for other people and see how their lives have changed. You know, And she's such a giving person. She's like a mom. She can give everything, and I think that's one of the things, that's one of the common grounds that we have. When we were back home, we had two estate gates, so different securities. Oh and we'll be driving. My wife like, these people have been under the sun. They need water, so we'll go back and buy water. Or we'll go grocery shopping. And she's like, ah, we need to, we've done, we've, they are done. She was like, how many security guys are? They might be eight. They will buy food for, obviously, for my money. <laughs> and she will go and she will buy food for everybody, water, give them. And so I'm like, why? And then like our estate every week, like probably three times in a week, she will send our maids to go and give them food and just every time. So she's a giving person. So I've seen God walk through her. So when she has something to say, 
Man, I listen. There's a lot of wisdom that comes out of her. So. Imi, <laughs> what's your background? You're trained. <clears throat> what do you do? <laughs> what were you doing in Nigeria before you brought this man and his family? Oh my God! <laughs> I didn't bring him. Bring him. <laughs> I dragged him. <laughs> left me when I'm still in Lagos. Um, um, I'm, I'm a trained therapist. I'm an arts therapist. Um, I'm also a sex therapist. So I deal with mental health issues or challenges and sex therapies and sex challenges with married people. Um, I also work with people who struggle with sexual addictions. So that's what I do. I'm an, I'm an artist as well. I paint. Um, yeah, that's Don't forget nice. your degree. She has a degree in mass communication, which yes. she did, which she I used, know. and she was working on radio. She usually forgets oh, that part, yeah. I don't understand. Wow. <laughs> it's been such a wonderful. She has yeah. such a beautiful radio voice. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, that's wow. what, that's, you that's left me. all that behind. Yes, yes, in yes. Of what the Lord has in store for you. Yes, because I'm, I'm aware, I'm, I'm also aware of, along this journey, one of the things that, one major thing, or two major things that God has taught us is that one if you're ever opportune to go through any trial if you're it's because I, I see it as an opportunity it's a privilege and it's an honor because it means that god trusts you mm. because i remember that remember the day that god gave us the instruction he gave us the the, the story of abraham mm -hmm. and i remember and we've even to, to so today, today we are still, we're still reading we are still reading genesis we, are I mean, still we started over again we went to the yeah. beginning of abraham's story and we're studying chapter by chapter because to be honest you need you need something to oh my be God, your you wife. To make sense. <laughs> <laughs> you need something to help you understand yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. You know, so it means that God trusts you, yeah, and God is calling you to be a person of faith. God, God trusts you. He trusts you enough with this story, with yeah. this journey, yeah. to call you on it. Yeah. You know, and then the second thing is that you know when you come into a covenant with God because that's what our journey has been it's, it's a covenant that we have with God when you come into a covenant with God God doesn't just keep his own part of the bargain he actually does everything in his power to help you keep your part of the bargain and so I know that I know that leaving everything behind is it will seem like a lot but truly truly is nothing compared to obeying God yeah yeah and, and it's not even about what you, what we are, what we are learned, what we've learned over every, every month, every milestone of this journey. That is, is that it's not, it's not even by what you can get from God. Obedience it's, is better than self. it's better. It's, it's, it's just that's just it. Living your life. I say to people now, when people ask me, I say, what else are we doing with our lives? To be honest, there's nothing else. God can not, use us any way. Do you know a lot of people are still, <laughs> you know, very skeptical about us coming here? You know, because yeah. we live, now we live life daily focusing on God. Yeah. So it's not like there's one round of cash sitting somewhere for us, like, like <laughs> oh, we have, you know, like, literally, I remember, like, in January, where we were, we wanted to move out from the, because we're still staying in the Airbnb, we wanted to move out four times, and then the lady will call Monday night, you're supposed to move out 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and I'm like, I have no money. And then something will happen, and then we have enough money for the next week. We did that four times until it was time to have the baby. And we're like, okay, every, this apartment has everything, so we can't get a place. If we get a place now, you know, uh, it will just be an empty apartment, nothing and everything. So we had enough money just to pay for a month, and then we did that. And then we've just been looking at God every day. Mm, what's for next? Week? Everything, what we're going mm. to eat, what the children are going to eat, how we're going to move for transportation, whatever. We're just waiting and looking on God. So there's this total dependence on God mm. now at this point. Yeah. So there's no. And not one day has yeah. God actually failed us. Something will happen. Not so, one day. As I, I remember as a last week, and I have to say this because I was really worried. As a last week or two weeks ago, I think we had just probably 2K or something. And some friends, for the life of me, were going to Tanzania. But they stopped by Kenya and we were in Nairobi for like a couple of days. And they called us, oh, our friends are here. So we made them up, up at, the, at the restaurant and you know, we had food and everything. And then they were asking, so how are you guys? And we were, oh, this is what's going on. And I remember before the end, some of them just put some dollars in our hands and that served us enough. And like, they had no idea. They had no idea what was going on. They had no idea that we, it was our last money that brought us. Because we didn't tell it. We, we, we are not going around saying, oh, so we don't have money, you know, so can you help? We don't mm -hmm. say anything, but we, we've seen God come through over and over and over again. Even with our kids, before we came here, they were always falling sick. Yeah. I will be here for about five months now, and 
we've not been to the hospital except to have the new baby. And even the new baby, we've been going for checkups and doctors say, your baby is fine. Like, everybody is doing okay. So, us. we've seen the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Like, the problem, okay, money is the problem. Money will come. You know, to move around is what you are going to do. Is it everything will come, but just focus on me and focus on what I mm. have called mm. you to do. Mm. So you, you know, on this journey, money is not actually the problem. It's your faith in God yeah. that's actually the that's problem. That's right. It's your that's faith right. in God, and, and yeah. I realized that for every time our faith began to shake, for every time we were so worried, and it, it means it, it just meant that we are taking our eyes nice off, off God. Of Jesus and we are taking our eyes off God, and we're, we're focused on so where is the promise coming? Yeah. When is the promise going to happen? And when then you start sinking. Like what's Peter, going to happen? This start, reality, yeah. exactly, just like Peter. On, mm -hmm. on yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Once he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink, and that's wow. exactly like wow. this journey. That's what this journey has been. It's been a water walking journey. Yeah, that's what this journey has been a like. Water every, walking journey. Yeah, yes. almost like moon walking. Oh, wow. <laughs> a water walking journey. Exactly. Yes. Wow. It's, wow. It's it's been, it's been wild. I never asked you one question. When, how did you meet? <laughs> we, we met on radio. Actually. Yeah, she, she um, was I, interning. I was, I was working at a radio station. Um, Femi came to. We like an officially acoustic. met. When we officially, officially met, met at the radio station. Yeah. Um, um, I remember on my show, I was playing. I used to. I, I had a day for jazz and Afro music. I was playing, and I discovered Femi's music in our system. And it was just one song. I'm like, man, this guy is gifted. And we have just one, one song. song. So I tweeted it, and then he reached out to me uh, via DM. I was like, oh, we, we need more of your songs. And then after that, we set up an interview, and that's how we became friends. That's what I told you. And, and then you eventually then, had all his songs. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. And, In fact, and his babies. Yes. <laughs> 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 it, wasn't, it wasn't an easy journey. <laughs> it wasn't an easy journey, but yeah, yeah, she she, she made me. Day. Wow. Yeah, that's she a story for another day. Oh, yes. yes. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> now, where do you see Femi going with his gift? Oh man, Femi Femi is going to be Femi is the guitar man of Africa. I agree, hundred percent. The I first time I heard him, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, Femi has a sound. God has. There are certain people that God gives songs to. You know, there's like a room in heaven. This is how I see it. There's a room in heaven with untouched songs that people haven't even tapped into. Oh. Femi is one of those people that has a portal to that room. Yeah. And God, God, I, I see Femi, it's not just, and I don't just speak of this, you know, spiritually, well, everything is spiritual. But even physically, Femi is, I see Femi, I see Femi being a representation of Africa to the world. Because Femi has, Femi has such a gift that is unique to just him. There are, there are famous people, popular people who have heard Femi play and they are astounded. That's how you know that he's unique, he's different. And it's not just about his gift, it's about his person. Because God gives gifts to people who he, he is sure of their hearts. Yeah. Femi has such a teachable, childlike heart. When you meet Femi, Femi is so open. He's so happy. I'm the one who's guarding and checking people, you know, don't play my husband. Or, you know. ah. Femi, is, Femi is so, he's so kind. It's one of the things I pray to God about. You know, I pray to God for a kind person. But Femi is kind, not just to me, to everyone he meets. Femi is a gift to whoever meets him. And so I, I see Femi being, you know, the representation of Africa to the world. Like, you know, I, pharaohs of the world, kings of the world will see the future of their nations musically through Femi. That's how I see it. Wow. You know, so yeah. Femi, how does that make you feel? Your wife <laughs> talking about you like that. I mean, she says it every time that I'm a king, so I just... I stay in my office <laughs> and be a king, not be a dictator, you know, but uh, also, like she said, my heart is very, very light. I don't really take things to heart like that. I love to sleep, so, which is one of the reasons why we really fight, even in our marriage, because she knows that if she's annoyed with me. Will I fight? Femi just doesn't fight with me. <laughs> I, I, I fight. He doesn't fight with me. I just, <laughs> I just leave, I just move on, you know. And even sometimes things might be some way, but I, I, I'm very, very optimistic. And I'm very grateful for every opportunity that comes my way. So I don't take it for granted, which is why I, anytime I'm on stage, I give 200%. So people are like, is it not too much? Like, why are you this good? But I, I'm leaving God's you know, gift in me and giving it out to the world. Because 
one of the things I say is I have to die empty. I can't go with, to the grave with all this potential and then you say, oh, but he could have and he could have. No, 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 no. I lived my life to the fullest. I lived, I loved, I played, I was happy, you know, and I left a very good legacy. Yeah. I didn't mention money because money will always come, so yeah. <laughs> Amy, the first time I heard your husband play, he <clears throat> was in church and I told him <laughs> that I seem like a Norman Brown. And, and I used to go for Norman Brown concerts in, in the States. Oh, wow. And, and then he tells me this later. Oh, I, I played for Norman Brown. <laughs> I said, yeah. this guy, you know, who is this guy, right? And I, I started to do a little more research about him, and I'm like, my goodness, so humble. But the way he played that day, I felt the spirit of God in the house. He brought the house down, not just by... You know, I, I really, you, you rarely hear someone play an instrument mm -hmm. and feel the presence of God arrive. Mm. But I did that day. Mm. Um, I don't know what God wants to do with you, but there's something humongous. There's mm. something huge. And the exciting thing is watching it all play oh, out. Unfold. The scripture, the, the scripture <laughs> says, we now know in part. Yeah. And I really believe God doesn't allow us to see everything yeah. because we may faint yeah, if we saw the exactly. picture. Mm. Yeah. Because the picture is too grandiose for us to handle. Mm. Or maybe our heads would become so big and we're wondering, you know, what's going on? It's like thinking about eternity. If you think about it too much, you just lose your mind. You so that's, your the, mind. that's the way God does it. Yeah. He, he gives you these things in parts and you know, shows you the pictures in parts. Yeah. And wants you to believe, also wants you to use your faith. Absolutely. You know, because eventually when you get there, you realize that all the glory belongs to God. One of the things I know about our story right now is there is nobody that can take the glory. Because nothing we have done makes sense logically. Wow. Nothing. Like we just had a baby a month ago. And as at two weeks before the baby came, the baby didn't have forget diapers, no clothes, nothing. Yeah. Absolutely we had nothing. And in just one day. One day. One day. People that we just met bought our baby clothes, you know, bassinet, strollers. Somebody was like, okay, I'll give you part of the money for the hospital bill. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to the hospital, we had the baby. And when we were walking out after paying the bill, and yes, we had enough money to pay for the bill and we had enough money to move back to the apartment. But I was like, it, was, it could have been possible for us to still stay in this hospital and not pay this bill. And then the news would go around, couple from Nigeria <laughs> in the hospital with the money and then they realized that it's us. But then we walked out. So those instances, like God is really, really here. God is really, he has said it that he will take care of us, that he will carry us. Because we will, will cover us. Because one of the things that, you know, for the first time, you know, because it makes a man feel a kind of way that like you cannot provide for your family mm -hmm. easily. And God says, you as a person, because I know you want to take care of everybody, you, I will take care of you. Mm -hmm. So God faced me first and said, don't worry, I will take care of you. Don't worry about your kids and your wife, I will take care of you. And also, one of the reasons why we came here is not just for us, but for our son, you know. And we were just talking about it before we came on set, the uh, history about it before. You know, we were very scared about him, his speech. So we're thinking, okay, getting him a speech therapist. You know, he's, he's very high functioning. He's a very, very jaded boy. Like, he's all was going. But as at this morning, he started writing. And we're talking about just as parents, like, this boy is writing. This boy is saying words, you know, and we can understand him and he can understand us. It's just, it's beautiful. So we can't wait to see what God... Uh, has in store for us, but not just necessarily us. God is using this testimony to bring people to Him. So we are just a vessel. We are we are honored that God has chosen us and chosen our family to do this. But more than that is what this story will do for other people. Yeah. How how they will do it afraid. Yeah. If God is telling you to move, move. Do yeah, it something. Afraid. Do it afraid. Just move. You know, it doesn't make sense. Sell everything. Move to a different country. With people were asking us, so what are you going to do? Is there a job for you there? Uh, do you have like an office work or whatever? Are you going to eat? I'm like, we're waiting God on God. Can be trusted. Yeah, so. Femi, <laughs> I'd like you to stay into that camera and tell our audience. There are people asking, I hear the voice of God. He's given me an instruction. Mm -hmm. He has spoken again and again and again. He has sent men and women of God to come and speak these words. But I am scared to move. I'm scared to do anything. I'm scared to 
to follow into that, to that instruction, hmm. how would you encourage them today? What would you tell them? Hmm. Huh. What I would say is that you know, God can be trusted. I think that the reason why we're mostly scared is because we see everything, we, we try to put God into our own reality. Hmm. And God cannot be boxed, God cannot be caged. <laughs> Um, if God, again, I would say, if, if, if you're ever opportune to go through anything, be sent on any assignment, given any instruction, um, go through any trial, um, it's because God trusts you. God is trusting yeah. you with that instruction, with the assignments, with the trial. He's trusting you with the journey, with the story. And it's an honor. It's truly an honor, truly a privilege. Mm -hmm. And you can't love yourself or the life you have now more than God loves you and more than God loves your life. Mm -hmm. And so if God is asking you to give up anything, be rest assured that you have no idea what's on the other side. Yeah. You have no idea. You, you, you may not see it now. Mm. The answer will come in months and years. It will come in a matter of time, but time is also relative. Yeah. <laughs> because God made time, so he can't be fixed in your time. Mm. And I would say that just keep looking at God. Just keep looking at God, keep focusing on Him. Every time your faith will shake, your faith will waver, you will ask yourself why, <laughs> but go back to God. He has all the answers. He has all the, all the provision, all the covering. He mm -hmm. has everything and He will take care. God, it, God can be trusted. God is not a man. Mm -hmm. God is not a liar. Mm -hmm. God is good. God, God is, is good. kind. Yes. God, God, uh, God is good and God is kind. Mm. God is good and God is kind. I, I don't know how else to put it in work. <laughs> Those words are even understatements. Yeah. God is good and God is kind, wow. to be honest. Wow. In addition to that, I'll just say, just trust. Trust God and trust what he has said. Yes, you might be scared. You might feel like it does not make sense. In, in our case, one of the things we realize or where we've gotten to now is there is nothing we cannot give mm. because we've given everything. Yeah. So what else do you want to take? Take it, because if it's taken from you, that means something better is coming. Mm -hmm. So you can't be in the fear of holding on to something and not knowing what is coming to you. If you hold on to it, that is all you ever be. But if you open your hands and allow God to walk through you, the your father owns the universe. Mm -hmm. So imagine, uh, even I'm, I'm looking at it from the perspective of being a father, that whatever my son wants, I will go all out, or my daughter daughters now <laughs> i'll go all out to make sure that they get it do you understand so imagine just times that quadruple trillion times that is what god is so you have to trust that he knows what is best for you because you can you might have a particular plan you know and um at the end of the day that is not where you are supposed to be i can use a, an example of i had about a lot of guitars you know and God said, give everything away. Now, I have only one. Now, with that one, I know it's going to multiply into a lot. But I had to trust God to let it go mm -hmm. so that the blessings can come. Mm -hmm. and, there's a, and it's not just for me. I have children also. This obeying God, is, it doesn't stop with you. Yeah, it does. So I, I think seven generations down the line, I don't think, if I'm doing anything right now, I'm trying to be familiar, trying to be a good person. I'm not doing it because of me. I really don't matter education. I have children, and they're going to have children, and their children are going to have children. They're going to bear my name. So if I'm not believing God now, and going through this now, I'm creating a new bloodline with my wife. Mm. So believing this is so important for what is to come. Mm. Yes, you know, yes. so obedience is so important. Do it, yes. Uh, there's a food in Nigeria called gari. It's uh, cassava flakes, flakes. You drink your gari, you not have a lot, but at the end of the day, come on. You have your caviar and whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I say one, one more thing? One more thing yes, is that listen. you know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> you know nothing. If people, it's only people who watch Game of Thrones that understand that statement, but you know nothing. Because we hold on to, and we're afraid to obey God, we're afraid to give for God or do things for God because we actually don't know anything. We think we do, but we don't know. No idea. You have no idea what's going to happen in the next minute, the next hour, the next day. But God knows all things. And so if God is asking you to do anything, just do, do it, it afraid. You, you will be afraid because no one says you, you will be interest. afraid. You will be scared. But do it. Hmm. Do it. When you do it, the more you do, 
The more you obey, the more the plan unravels to you, the more of a friend you become to God and God reveals his secrets to his friends. And so if you want to know, do. If you want to know more, do, obey. God will reveal to you as time goes on and he will teach you. There are invaluable things that God has taught us on this journey that we would have never learned if we weren't on this journey. Yeah. There's certain sides to God that you will never experience until you go through certain valleys. And make no mistake, the valley of the shadow of death is not just about evil. It's not just about death. It's not just, no. There's certain valleys that God will take you through because he needs you to see certain sides of him that you wouldn't naturally see on a normal and day. And he even needs you to yeah. die to self. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. the, oh man, that's oh man. Let's not get into it. <laughs> let's, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Guys, I'm I'm so excited Thank about you. your Thank life. You, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Story. I know we've only touched a little bit of it. Um, yeah. Peter Man of Africa. Yes, that's me. That's Where me. Where did this thing begin? When did you start to play? How well, old were you? Um, I was I was very young. I, I didn't touch a guitar like an actual guitar until probably 2002, two, three. Mm -hmm. But before then, obviously, I, music started earlier. But then I, we, we created this uh, guitar from like um, wood and then burnt tire strings. So that was what I knew for a while. But before then, I had been playing the piano since like you know probably in the 90s. You know, I've been playing the drums. You know, also trying my hands with percussions and everything. But I've always been into music. My parents, it took them a while to get on the program because they were like, at that time, you know, African parents, you have to go to school, you have to do this, which is clearly understandable. I'm a parent myself too, so I get it. But eventually it became, oh, he, this, that's all he can do. So I, I, I started playing, I started teaching, I became self-taught, I started playing all these different instruments and I started playing the guitar and I started teaching myself. And uh, at the point, I just decided that it was time for me to go into the world and start working with musicians. So I started, and I've had the pleasure of working with African legends um, in recording from Angeli Kijo to um, Yusun Do in Senegal to all the big stars in Nigeria that I've been able to work with. Also, on my own, my own music, I've been able to do a lot of beautiful, beautiful things. So I'm, I'm a blessed man with the Tell career. Us who all you've played with? Hell. Hey, Willili. Okay, well, wow, it's a long list, but anybody that is anybody right now in the Nigerian music industry, from Don Jazzy to David Do, Whiskey, Dadekunle Gold, Simi, Ricardo Banks, Fields, ah, it's a lot. Anybody that has done anything in the Afrobeat space, I, I was actually one of the people that started this Afrobeat movement because I've been recording for over 15 years, you know, so I've been playing. And even till now, you know, I'm still on the charts with some of these guys. They come to me and I'm like, okay, we have this track, probably co-produce or just record guitars on. Feels, just with Feels. Yeah, Feels, Feels, Feels. Feels is one of the biggest artists in the world right now and he's a friend. We work together. So Adekunle Gold also, we, we grew up together, you know, and thankfully he's, he's a big star right now. We've been able to work over the years. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of people that globally? I worked with. Like, yeah, globally. Globally, um, hmm. As I, you soon do, um, I think I did. Uh, I've done a couple of projects for people abroad, but one thing I can say is um, I started scoring movies. So I started doing Hollywood series and movies because I also produce, and uh, so my music would be heard in like different trailers, Hollywood trailers, and uh, I scored my first Netflix movie. Uh, last year was it last year, babe? Mm, yeah, before yeah, before, yeah, before Breaded Life, and I did that. So yeah, my music is just literally everywhere. So I think we have been waiting for this time. <laughs> Please pick your guitar up. Oh gosh! Please something. Ah, uh, let's see. The let's audience see. wants to hear it. We, we've been talking too much. <sighs> let's see.
Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you, thank you. Wow, wow. All we can say is wow. Self-taught. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it. The guitar man of Africa and his prophetic wife. You know, there's something about having a partnership with God, but having a partner who listens to God. There are things that we're called into and spaces we're called into, spheres we're called into. But recognizing that the voice of God is most important over anything else is what's key. They've said it, they've said it again, moving forward afraid. Moving forward because God said move forward. Even when the picture is not clear, we have to trust because he's the God that we trust in. This story cannot be made up. You can't make this up. And I tell you, I cannot wait and I know the world cannot wait to see what happens to this couple and to their family because of trusting in God. That story about reading and hearing and following in the footsteps of Abraham when he's told to leave and to go up to a place called there is exactly their story. I cannot wait, and I'm sure you all can't wait, but thank you for coming on our show. Thank you so much for having us. to ask. Bini, God bless you. Amen. A powerhouse, a woman of God. God bless you both. Amen. Asante. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. All right.